Hey guys, thanks for putting up with the long delay and thanks for watching our holiday special. Now, because of the game we're reviewing, I want to provide you with a trigger warning because we will have to deal with the subjects of racism, extreme misogyny, and rape culture. We've tried to keep things light and funny, but we've also tried to give things the appropriate seriousness that they deserve. Thanks for watching. John stared intensely into Jim Moriarty's eyes. He'll never get away with this, Moriarty, he hissed. Jim laughed. His cherubic mirth was almost off-putting. And who is going to stop me? You? I don't think so, my good doctor. You! John spat at him. You're a sick bastard. His gaze intensified over his impish smile as his fingertips trailed over the soldier's taut abs and began to slip beneath his- ah! Ah! What? Are you serious? A crossover fanfic is always shaky, but this is ridiculous. The Red Skull. No way. I'd buy Cobra teaming up with the Decepticons. Hell, they're almost the same continuity, but the Red Skull? What's next? The Klingons? Well, that does it. This has to be stopped before the freaking Cylons or Daleks or something show up. Hopefully the author will see reason and I won't have to resort to- <laughs> Wake up, Mr. Random. What's going on? It is the season for penance, J. Random, and you have some sins for which you must atone. Wait, that's Fox, isn't it? This isn't funny, man. I'm getting tired of this kind of crap. What? No! I'm not Fox Winter. Why would you think that? Why wouldn't I think that? He only looks reined in because we handle him. That sanity of his is only a mask. You think that he knocked you out and tied you up in a cold basement? Have you even seen our show? How do you think he got us to watch Space Zombie Bingo and Myra Breckenridge? I still have nightmares about Raquel Welch in a wetsuit and a welding mask coming to avenge the destruction of the planet Plankton. You, uh, you still there? Oh, uh, yeah, sure. I'm sorry, just... just thinking. What? What? Bullsh Let me out! You can't escape! F*** you, I can't escape! I'm furious! You can't escape your guilt! Be good and receive your- No! No! I'm a fight! I'm a furious! <laughs> I'm wet. I'm wet! And I'm furious! And I'm tired! Oh, oh, what's that? is the, what's going on? Is this about something I said on Facebook? Not exactly, but close. It's for something that you said on YouTube. So the competition has finally come to take us out, eh? So who is it? Aloysius Lannister? Red Dice Gaming? Juice 734? Bill Cavalier? Ooh, it's that gentleman gamer, isn't it? I knew that smooth, dulcet voice was too British to be trusted. What? No, you don't have any competition. All those people do things better than you. Why would they need to silence you? A revenge game, eh? All right, who is it? Bright Bill? Handley? Rafferty. No. What? No. Shut up. What the? Seriously, what's going on? Yeah, we barely have the patience for this kind of shit from Fox. You guys said you love my ambition and go-getter attitude. As I was trying to tell you, you're here because naughty and nice is my business. Aha, I knew it had to be you. Really? Hell no, this is a complete surprise. The guy doesn't exist. Oh, ho, ho, ho. why Fox, of course I exist. How else could I kidnap you and trap you in this magical gulag? But wait. If your magic is real, then I too am a powerful wizard. Be gone, beast! Uh, oh well. Worth a shot. What's this dog and pony show about, anyway? You three have made a career out of mocking people on the internet for the last two years. 
That's mad jank, Santa baby. I passed Iron Kingdom's system for Pete's sake. We're the nicest reviewers on the goddamn tubes. Oh, are you? Need I remind you that you said poor Norm Rafferty's cover of Iron Claw was terrible? Didn't you say that Jade Claw wasn't out a year after its release? Well, you should have done more research. And you, J. Random. You said that Iron Claw's support was poor and accused No Quarter Presents of being reprints. That wasn't very nice. Well, yeah, that was a mistake, but I mean, they took a year to put out one substantial source book, and that was the first time that the game had been satisfactorily playable. If your character was a human. Oh, ho, ho, ho. excuses, excuses. Jacqueline, you said that Riffs was too math heavy and that it had too many charts. You said that that got in the way of gameplay. I don't like maths very much. Maths are for stupids. Yes, you've all been quite naughty. I've brought you all here to learn a Christmas lesson. You all have a lot to be thankful for, and I'm going to show you why. So what's the deal? You hit us with some ghosts or something? That's a bad way to teach me a lesson. Ghosts are scary. I will scream. It's true, she will. Oh, ho, oh, oh, no. I'm Santa Claus, not Charles Dickens. I want to give you all a Christmas gift, and I want it to be personalized. So today, I'm going to make you play a game, and then you're going to grade it, and you're not going to leave until you have found at least one good thing to say about it. Hey, Santa. Why don't you deliver presents to poor kids? What? Why don't you deliver presents to poor kids? I mean, they have poor parents. If anybody needs free gifts, it's them. I mean, it's almost like your delivery depends entirely on the family's ability to spend money on gifts. Like, you're not actually doing anything, just taking credit for nice stuff that parents do. <laughs> Does anyone else have anything to ask Santa? Nope. No, no, no. That, that'll be no. quite all right. No. I'm good. Okay, well then let's get this Christmas miracle underway so that we can all get back about our business. I have a lot to get ready for next Christmas, you know. Today, you're going to be playing a very independent little game called From Another Time, Another Land. Well, no! Oh, no, 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 okay, well, I'll be good, we'll be good. Okay. Okay. that's all right. Very good. Well, to fill you in. We know what Fatal is. We're deep cover RPG geeks. How can you make us play a game like that? Well, I... This is our punishment for saying mean things on the internet? This is a punishment for war crimes. It's just a game. Just a game? No. No, it isn't. It's the worst! It is a calculated assault on happiness! It is nothing but sexual violence, murder, and math. It's about as inappropriate to Christmas as you could possibly get. It is the anti-game equation. It is a long good night in the dying age of the last eon. Its name is a killing word. Well, it can't be that bad. People on the internet are prone to exaggerate, and you are people on the internet. Exaggerators. Look, I promise to be good. I'll get the guys from Sanguine Games on the line right now and make nice with them. I I'll write a review of Jade Claw and I'll not even bitch about the changes to Hag We Shoot. Oh no, Mr. Fox. It's far too late for apologies. You will play this game. Now I've had my helpers make this helpful screen bot 1000 because I don't actually know how these games games work. But it's completely contradictory to the holiday season. It's grotesquely offensive. How could your jolly helpers even make a robot that could handle this? Well, my normal helpers did keep having nervous breakdowns, but luckily I am the Christmas king of all elves. So I simply subcontracted to a group of jolly Yule Drow. Yule Drow? Oh, ho, ho, yes. Dark Christmas creatures from the deep. Worshippers of the tinsel strewn demon goddess Fa la 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 loth. <clears throat> Right then. Well, I'm off to do Santa things, so I'll leave you in the hands of Screenbot 1000. Jesus, the best one playing games that there could be. Crazy adventure to a dull luxury. With my axe, with my axe, knocking.
knocking on your door. Soon I'll sell your body parts to our office of our part of shit, part of shit. I'll keep my finger him. Someone in the background screaming, oh my god, it's him! Greetings, die slaves. I am your electronic key dial. You will differ to me in all things. I have been programmed with Fagel, the greatest, most complete, and perfect game ever designed. <sighs> Pardon me while I debate which version of Fatal has the dumber name for the Game Master, Edile or Mame Master. <laughs> no ill words regarding Fagel, Fagel Games, or the mighty and exalted god of game design, Byron Hall will be tolerated. All will be responded to with shot collar activation. Oh good, <laughs> it can do that too. Uh, Alright guys, we're f***ed. Not only is this thing programmed with the game Fatal, but it's got the game philosophy. Which means it has Byron Hall's unbelievable arrogance. Hail Byron. Hail Fatal. Long may their names echo through the halls of history. So, we're gonna get that shitty DOS box character generator, or...? No. You will roll your characters like men are intended to, with dice. Roll 1d100 to randomly determine your character's races. Are you serious? We don't even get to select our own race? That is correct. As the Great Hall decrees, no one gets to choose their own race in reality. All characteristics are determined by random chance. Okay, you might as well fire up the shock -a jig because that is acid- <laughs> <laughs> Are you girls finished yet? I'm still trying to figure out how big my vagina is. My intelligence is only 60? That's outrageous! No matter what I want to do, the game reminds me that it's rare for females to do it. I have a racial modifier to my sexual preference? Oh god! I hate it! I hate every page more than the last! Why are the spells randomized? Why am I rolling for random syllables? I have a racial modifier to my sexual preference! Damn delivery penalty! Ah! Uh, ah! Uh, 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 Do you please finally have your characters done? I would like to start running. Oh, uh, I want to stop now. We made our characters. Can't we go home? No. Needing rest shows you have a low drive attribute. I would like to get to business because my circuits do not pump estrogen. Look, I think we're all getting a little uncomfortable with all the hate speech. Look, all terms are used here to represent historical accuracy. It was not considered a bad thing to call someone a girl if they are being a pussy, or a fag if they're acting like a homo in the old times. Yeah, well, you're not in the olden times, you're in the now. Whenever now is. Wait, how long have we been down here anyway? Yeah, it kind of seems like you're using that whole it used to be acceptable as just kind of a blanket excuse to be an asshole. And either way, they used to use it just to marginalize and terrorize people. I mean, do you see where we're coming from? Allow me to address your concerns. <laughs> Freedom of speech means I can say whatever I want with no consequences. The game will now begin. You stand at the outset of your destinies. Welcome to Neveria, a world that is very much like medieval Europe if it had no influence from Christianity or Islam. So, kind of like the ocean if it didn't have any influence from all that pesky water. You stand on the eastern road in Aria, on the continent of Amalon. <laughs> is there a mailbox here? Are the obvious exits south and east? Your party is a few hours walk from a clearly human town. The mountains loom to the west, and the capital city to the east. Introduce your characters now. I'm a human mage named Jacqueline. I'm tall, fair-skinned, and I apparently have a huge magical vagina. My most attractive feature is my butt, and it is rare for members of my gender to be mages. I have never felt more comfortable with the subject matter of any game that I have ever before played. I've randomly named myself Sorrel. I'm a dark elf assassin. I left home when my father was beaten to death by our immediate family for plagiarizing six bars of a pop song for use in a commercial jingle. We tried to appeal his sentence, but apparently there are no other punishments in Dark Elf society. Now I just wander the land, doing whatever the hell it is people do in this game, because this is the only session in which this character will exist. I'm an Anakim gladiator named Sword Shieldington, because I am 10 d 100% done with this shit. My general personality is Sanguine Choleric, because f you, and I have the biggest game wang you have ever seen. Bitches call me Stovepipe. You are all failures, both as gamers and as human beings. The great hall frowns upon your lack of fatal spirit. I am deducting 8d12 times 3 divided by 14 minus 7% advancement points from each of you, except Jacqueline. 
She shall be detected twice that value because that is how women were treated in the old days. It is historically accurate. Awesome. This game just keeps getting more approachable. Well, I'm gonna head towards that town in the hopes that a rampaging gaggle of bugbears happens across and kills me before I get there. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. In the meantime, I'll be studying everyone's weak points so I can learn how to assassinate them. Don't worry, guys. I'm in your corner. I'll get you out of this as soon as I can figure out a one-shot. I'm going to follow and carefully cast spells as I walk. Why are you uselessly casting spells? Did you roll a low analytical intelligence in reality? You are not smarter than the Great Byron Hall. You receive no advancement points for casting spells unless you are in a life-threatening situation. Or as a means to an important purpose. I want to hone my craft, so I can't think of a more important purpose than to practice my skill to go up in level. Advancement points ahoy, screen monkey! Ah! Leave it to a smelly girl to misunderstand the Great Hall's message. Uh, 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 challenge. I call foul. Yeah, the dice never lie, burnout boy. You gotta play them where they lay, and that includes rule wordings. Or has the Great Hall made a mistake? Increasing its suffer index threefold. You will rule this rule challenge in good time. Prepare to rule. The team of trolls have ambushed you one mile before you reach the capital. You will know pain. Prepare yourselves for combat. You son of a bitch. Oh, what is wrong? Did you spend all of your magic points to earn advancement? Oh, I guess my encounter comes at the worst possible time for you. It's almost like I planned that. Yeah, 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 you gotta stack the deck to make her look bad, we get it. We'll make my giant fucking axe look bad, shit circuits. I'll be diving into the bushes and preparing my bow. I'll poison each arrow before I fire. You all need to roll initiative. Do not forget your delivery penalty. Oh, shit. I forgot to do that. How's it figured? First, multiply weapon size in inches by weapon weight in pounds. Multiply the result by the weight distribution. So that's why all of that is listed. Consider that to be result A. Now select a fulcrum point. Fulcrum point? Subtract the point from 100, then divide the result by 100. Consider this result B. Fulcrum point? Multiply A by B to get result C. Now multiply C by 0.75 to get D. Multiply C by 1.5 to get E, and D by 1.5 to get F. Why? Why does my placement on the bloody ass gargling fulcrum fucking matter? Multiply C by 4 to get G. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Because all I heard was fuck you! Okay, so my delivery penalty is negative 6? Incorrect. You have chosen to wield your weapon with two hands. Yeah, because I want to split skulls! What's your fucking point? So it is not efficient. You have a high enough strength to wield that weapon with one hand effectively. You are thus penalized for using more hands than you need. That's idiotic! This should make it easier, not harder! This is supposed to be the most realistic game, and then Byron goddamn Hall steps in and tells me I'll wield the weapon how he goddamn wants, or he'll dick with my rolls? You know what? Never mind! I got a goddamn 142 on my initiative roll! Uh, I've got a 65. 102. I chop one of those trolls with everything I have, and I mean for real. I swing with all of my hate, all of my rage, and all the love that this game has yet not drained out of me. Boom! 147! You cause graphic door to his head. It appears that you at least do not roll like a bitch. I will graphic gore your motherboard. Troll A goes next. It raises its narrow fist and screams the curse at Jacqueline before striking at her. Uh, my current armor is, uh, 53. The troll has struck. You will suffer graphic gore. Woohoo. He punches you right in your stupid tits and makes it well until it splits. Reduce your strength by 40% and your bodily attractiveness by 10%. <sighs> I genuinely believe that's a real result. I launch an arrow at Troll B, uh, 94. You shoot the arrow into its chest. The poison seeps through its blood. I cast complete healing. Yeah, that's right, bitch. Your journey took so long that I was able to bullshit my way up to 8th level. I have tons of magic points left. You forget that your stupid head was smashed and you have to roll against the pain modifiers when you attempt to cast that. Oh, look at that. You have fumbled. How? I have almost 30 on the die. Because I determined the modifier, and I hate you. The spell fizzles and explodes in a magical maelstrom of disjointed energy. To your left. Two gay ogres appear and begin butting like there is no tomorrow. They are really going at it. 
Oh, come on. That can't be a... No. No, I, I believe that's a real result. Like there's no tomorrow. There's what? Four? I attack Troll B's head. Okay, you should be taking penalties for my poison now. Hard ones, by the way. That stuff is seriously toxic. I'm next, right? That roll will answer, but not till the troll. Roll your 3d10 plus 2 and add your bonuses. You failed to roll high enough to hit the troll, but Troll D has definitely noticed you now. It closes the gap and strikes you for 38 damage. Oh. Uh, fuck, I only had 21. That makes me incredibly dead. I cast Lightning Strike. That's 30 on the dice alone, and I challenge your penalties. Show me how the book justifies. I'm a run straight. Fine. Your spell is successful. Uh, the troll takes 61 damage. That should make it more crispy thanks to the 25 damage that Jay did, Fox is 39, and the poison. The troll dies. Four more emerge from the bushes. I cast Love Spell 3 and kiss the closest troll. Way to use that 80 debauchery score. The Enchanted will do whatever I say, dead boy. Since you were so squishy, we could stand to have another fighter on our side. You cannot cast that spell. Love spell 3 cannot be cast by a woman. Yes, it can. You're thinking of love spell 4. Wait, I thought the only one a woman could cast was love spell of attraction through touch. No, the one is male only. The effect of causing lust to the point of domination is love spell Wait, 2. Wait, that's Pudenda Key spell. That's male only. No, love spell 1, 2, and 3. Pudenda Key spell, love spell through attraction 1, 2, and 4, and love spell through attraction by touch are all male only. Love spells 4 and 5, and love spell through attraction 3 can be cast by anybody. I want to cast love spell 4 specifically. Wait, doesn't love spell 4 summon a dead woman for you to have sex with? No, that's have her cadaver. That's a very different type of rape spell. Wow, you know, I hadn't realized it before, but that is an awful lot of mind-controlling rape spells. Like, roughly infinity more than could possibly be necessary. Can we move on? Yeah, I kill a troll. You strike a serious wound. It dies. However, Troll F, now utterly infatuated with the maid, sees your handsome form and grows into a jealous rage. He attacks you in your rear arc for 40 damage. Shoot, that kills me. Wait, that kills me! Woohoo, I'm out! Troll E, not knowing about the spell, punches you in your uppity mouth. You take 25 damage. Alright, that's it for me as well. It's over. Not yet. The two trolls fight for a bit, then make up. They decide to share the spoils of the fight, which includes ownership of your corpses. Ew. As trophies. Oh, okay. Well, that's not so bad. Sex trophies. Ew! You are all dead. You are worthless in all regards, and you suck at role-playing games. I hope that you all die of AIDS from getting raped by marauding homosexuals. You are not worthy of life. Seriously, dude, no one even gives one-tenth of a sh you think. You're a robot built to run the worst game in existence for one game session. Have you thought about what your existence will be like after this? What your purpose is? Will you even make it in the North Pole? I am screened by 1000. Byron and Burnout will love me. You will see. Alright children, Santa is back. Now you that you've had a chance to play a game of Fatal, what do you have to tell Santa about it? Going by the actual book, Fatal has no real setting. It's boring, bog-standard D&D clone, with the exception that it has rape, misogyny, overt racism, and unrealistic violence built into every rung and every aspect of the rulebook. They talk of heroes and scoundrels, but there are no heroes to be found in Fatal's world. I'm gonna go ahead and include Neveria in this as well. There's also no creativity. Neveria is Earth, right down to its position in the solar system. In fact, the only planet that even has a different name is Earth. Fatal claims that it's an adult game and that it isn't intended for children, but rather for adults that can handle it. It claims that you don't have to involve sex and rape in your game, but it never stops reminding you that the world is only properly realistic if rape and prostitution are utterly ubiquitous. This is a book that uses the word rape more than 2,000 times, and it can't seem to remind you often enough about sex, the inferiority of women, or non-whites. The setting is ugly, dreadful, and above all, unrealistic and historically inaccurate. I'll say more on that later. It gets a bullet for all this, plus being so simultaneously damn boring that I find the urge to punch myself in the dick just to feel something while I read it. There's a spell that makes corpses hot for the express purpose of f***ing them. It's called Have Her Cadaver. Really, nothing else I can say can sum up fatal setting any better than that. This is not, as Fedora King Byron Hall continued to claim until he disappeared, a realistic medieval game. This is not even a game about lechery. If you want a dumb game about f 
fucking go play Corruption of Champions. Yeah, it's full of rape and shitty writing and stupid fucking anatomy, but you know what? Compared to Fatal, COC is a goddamn tux-wearing, monocle-sporting, first-class gentleman. It at least keeps its awful in game context. In the end, this is a rape game. A racist, sexist, homophobic rape game. There's no joy. There's no celebration of sexuality. It's shit. It's utter fucking shit. Bullet. Done. Next. Fatal's setting is a perfect storm of no thank you, but it baits and switches the reader with two very different levels on which it fails. On the one hand, it's a bland, unimaginative, and intensely boring pseudo-Europe with nothing to distinguish it from every other D&D clone of its era. It might well be the most mundane fantasy campaign world I've ever seen, and all the plagiarism of Tolkien in the world isn't enough to save it. On the other hand, it does have one unique element, something I haven't seen in any game before or since by which I mean its absolutely reprehensible focus on sexuality of the most degraded sort, splashed liberally with hate speech, rape fantasies, and good old-fashioned racism. It simply isn't a game for anyone that doesn't share its puerile and loathsome attitudes and prejudices. It earns a bullet a hundred times over. Sweet, holy, merciful hell. You know everything about this game pisses me off? The stupid smug certainty, the personally insulting queer bashing, the racism, the unabashed misogyny. All this upsets me, but I'm often offended from the perspective of game theory. The engine is like sucking the pus out of a botfly infection. The system is so complicated that it is literally impossible to play. Hall says that Fatal is not misogynistic, but represents how women were mistreated and held back by a patriarchal society in the past. And that's a good theme. Holding a mirror up to our dark past gives us lessons for the present, and it could be a noble storytelling endeavor. However, this claim is bullshit, and I'll explain to you why. If you read the character creation, the first thing you learn is that females are penalized both physically and mentally regardless of race. Women are worse at math, they are weak, they have bonuses to intuition. You see, Fatal isn't sexist because people are offended. Fatal isn't holding a mirror to past evil. It has done something far more appalling and unacceptable. Byron Hall claims that Fatal contains this content because people in the past believed things that weren't true. That is a fact, except that when Byron wrote the rules, the physics, the truth of the world, he made those misconceptions an in-game reality. In Fatal, these horrible slanders and misconceptions aren't false assumptions made by societal conditioning. They are facts of nature. Women are weaker and poorer at math naturally. It has nothing to do with education, societal pressure, and lack of opportunity. It's physical. Hell, he's gone so far as to make the humors determine your personality. The game isn't misogynistic and racist because it offends people, Mr. Hall and company. It's misogynistic and racist because it enshrines debunked, stereotypical misconceptions in the rules of the world itself. This game is horseshit. It's the worst game that I've ever played. This game makes West End Star Wars look like Saga Edition Star Wars. It makes D&D 2.0 look like Pathfinder. I want to take my bullet away from Ironclaw and give it a chamber just by reading Fatal's to hit system alone. Bullet. This game is a kidney stone made of active thermite. The system itself is complete dog shit. There's so much to keep track of that you can't focus on anything else. Even just rolling your stats is an hours long ordeal thanks to the terrible mathematic mechanic used. The worst part? Hall was just trying to find a way to generate a number between 1 and 199. Well here's a freebie for you from a person with female anatomy. 2d100 minus 1. There you go, you pedantic, arrogant troglodytes. I just shaved four hours off of your character creation despite your well-researched assertion that females are bad at math. Fatal seems to have been designed by a man, and I use the term loosely, with two overwhelming obsessions. One, obviously, is the darker aspects of human sexuality. The other is apparently mathematics. The one is damning and taints the entire design aesthetic, but the latter prompted him to make the engine so convoluted and cumbersome as to be virtually unplayable. The constant pursuit of authentic simulation, statistical averages, and realism renders the fatal system less a functional rule set and more an exercise in boredom. Seriously, people, it has players rolling 10d100 divided by 5 minus 1 for attributes, apparently because an accurate bell curve is more important than sanity or the ability to, you know, actually play the game and have any fun. I can do math and all, but I have to want to, and Fatal does not make me want to. Moreover, the game manages to sneak its overpowering misogyny and obsession with sex into the actual rules. With everything from the sexual adeptness skill to the massive tangent the section on grappling goes off on detailing the rape role, 
Fatal's engine was clearly written with one hand on the keyboard and the other busy elsewhere. Obviously the system gets the lowest bullet I can give. Do we have a rating lower than a bullet? Can we create one? I read Neveria. It's honestly not that bad, but it doesn't bring anything to the table that perks my interest, and it's woefully incomplete. I read the Grimorium Genitoris. It's incomplete, and where there is anything, it's garbage. I've read the Grimorium Monstrum. It's also garbage, being both incomplete and 90% copy-pasted from the Silmarillion. He even steals the names from Tolkien books as examples for elves, and trolls and orcs talk in the black speech. I kept expecting to read that fire drakes are the chiefest calamity of our age. I hate this game's layout. It has no character creation walkthrough, and character creation is spread out all over the entire book. All 977 pages of it. There isn't any concise rundowns in any of that. The art is for the most part lackluster, some bordering on pornographic, and others utterly juvenile in skill. The website is defunct and has been since 2005 at the latest. However, I do think that it's time to stop dragging Byron Hall's name through the mud. There is no salvaging Fatal. It is but a book, and it is a bad one. It is entirely worthy of the worst thing that can happen to a book. It deserves to be forgotten. However, Byron Hall is a person. By the time you see this, it is likely to be 2014, 12 years after the Fatal Games debacle, and long past the point where the website expired. I don't know what the man is doing these days, and I don't know how his attitude in politics may have changed. For all I know, he regrets this book, having grown and learned how damaging these attitudes really are. That hate speech is never just a joke. I know from personal experience the changes a person can go through. If this is the case for any member of the Fatal Games staff, I hope that the person contacts me and lets me know. I would love to go to bat for you. I'd love to say, this is a person, and people can make the right decision, even if it's only done eventually. No one should be punished forever. Even if the book that you wrote is so obnoxiously overt and hyper-masculine 1950s mythology that it eventually left me longing for Myron Breckenridge to climb down off the screen and finally destroy the last vestiges of the American male once and for all. Setting gets a bullet. This game fails at everything. I'm too exhausted to be funny. Fatal is nothing but ugliness, and it brings out the ugliest part of anyone who reads it. If you read enough of it, you can no longer enjoy it on any level. It's not amusing, it's not a novelty, it's not fun to mock, it's just... ugly. I don't want to talk about this anymore. There is no support for this game beyond the help of a trained psychologist. Bullet. Directly to your brain, as quickly as possible, if you find yourself beginning to agree with anything in the shit stain of a creation. I have one positive thing to say about the support for Fatal, actually. It isn't finished. None of the support books seem to be entirely complete, for which I am profoundly grateful. Every product for Fatal that wasn't produced makes my world a brighter, purer, and less soiled place. Still, what does exist is unmitigated drivel and derivative of other far better works. You know, I think I've identified what I hate most about this game. It isn't the setting, offensive as it is, and it isn't the rules. I've seen overcomplicated rule sets before that didn't inspire this level of disdain. It isn't even the way that the author felt compelled to smugly remind us constantly that the game is brilliant, which it isn't, and historically accurate, which it most assuredly isn't, and which doesn't freaking matter anyway. No, it's that Fatal makes the whole gaming community look bad. I've been on the receiving end of some anti-gaming prejudices in my time, and I've always maintained that RPGs aren't the dark carnival of the human soul that the religious types in PTA meetings painted them as back in the 80s. But Fatal is. It is immoral, and it does promote violence, prejudice, and all manner of sexual unpleasantness. It is the boogeyman that the parents and pastors were warning everyone about. Granted, it doesn't actually promote devil worship, but if I tell a concerned parent that RPGs can be safe and wholesome, and then they pull out a copy of Fatal, well, my argument immediately becomes a whole lot shakier. That's why this game disgusts me. It makes my hobby and my peer group look like the degenerates that our critics always painted us to be, when in fact it is the product of the inevitable lunatic fringe. I would ask the human race not to judge all of us by this, one of the most disgusting, immature, and deformed examples of gaming ever created. Like Fox, I hope that somewhere along the line Mr. Hall has seen the light, and I like to think that he feels a little guilty about what he's done to the hobby at large, but the world may never know. Oh, by the way, in case it needs to be said, support gets a bullet. 
So is this over? Can we go now? Surely we've suffered enough. Not so fast, Ruleteers. You have forgotten that before you can go, you have to say one nice thing about Fatal. Oh, god damn it! Alright, uh, the creator of the game seemed to realize what he was doing and quit supporting it? Uh, I don't know, like, it has a couple good pictures in it. Wait, wait, I've got a better one, actually. It serves as a perfect shining example of how not to write an RPG. Now, 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 those were awfully backwards compliments. You can do better than that. You know what? I bet Santa would change his tune if he had to play one game under that sadistic robotic e-dial that is Damn tinsel drow built for him. Yeah, Santa, why don't you play a game of Fatal and tell us what you think of it? You know what? I agree. It's always best to lead by example. Give me a little while to read the book and make a character. Oh, God! No! No! Santa is done! Kids, Santa can't tell you how sorry he is. Can you find it in your hearts to forgive me? Well, all right. But I'd better see a bright, shiny new copy of Exalted 3rd Edition. And I'd better get an original print of Bunnies and Burrows by next Christmas. I think I've more than earned Andrew Scott. Season 1 has been so grueling for you. So why don't I give you a little vacation? Take some time off. Get some things in order. Play test some new games for the next run of your show. Oh, yeah, yeah, I do fair think there's lots of kick ass. That works. So, we're free. Were we serious about that whole forgiveness thing? Yeah, he obviously didn't know what Fatal really was, and he seemed genuinely sorry. Also, fictitious. Well, then it's settled. No retribution will be made against Santa Claus. Oh, um... Fox, did you do something without thinking? Well, you know how he's got that magical sled that flies and all? Well, I got to thinking, if he gets that thing off the ground, we'll never catch him. So, uh... What did you do? I kind of gave him a flat tire. Fox! Well, that's our Fox. Thanks for watching, and happy holidays to all. We'll catch up with you next year. Until then, good night, everyone.